Hey YouTubers, let's go back in time a little bit. Let's look at some of these new uh, traditional Pontiac V8 aluminum cylinder heads. I grabbed on, latched on to this Pontiac V8 cylinder head and was like, holy Jesus, this thing weighs as much as a truck. I had forgotten how heavy these Pontiac V8 heads were even in aluminum. These cylinder heads still have the Pro, Pro Comp engineering part number. I believe it's PCE 281.2165 for complete uh, cylinder head. But these are, uh, I'm supposed to clean them up. So part of being able to clean them up has been able to I'm gonna break in. I'm gonna break into this cylinder head, get an idea what kind of valve job, what bowl cut percentage, and everything they're using on it. But these heads are considered a round port Pontiac V8 cylinder head. A lot of people get confused because these clearly are not round exhaust ports, and they surely don't. <laughs> come anywhere near to looking like this. This is a traditional Pontiac round port exhaust exit. Okay, look at the difference. The only thing that matches round port is the bolt pattern, the bolts that hold it on, and where these things dump will match up to your round port Pontiac headers. The problem is, you don't, because they redesigned this port, and this port is supposed to flow, um, I think it's 202 CFM at 600 lift, which isn't really that great, but it's only got a 1.66 exhaust valve which anybody that's been around the Pontiac V8s any length of time know that mostly you want to upgrade to a 1.77 exhaust valve and port the head accordingly, or at least do a valve job and a blend. But these are, you know, aftermarket heads made by who knows who. Um, I wanted to read this number that's cast in, or actually looks like it's stamped into the casting. 17208-2020-03-11-0309. I have no idea what that means, but if you're building a Pontiac V8, perhaps that will be beneficial to you. Um, the casting's not horrible. It's got some kind of ugly areas on it, which I'm still, you know, kind of taking in little by little. So it's not a perfectly smooth, un, you know, unblemished casting. Um, the inside of the ports that I've seen so far has a nice uh, texture or finish to them. I just wanted to show you guys these uh, Speedmaster Pontiac V8 cylinder heads. I mean, they don't look horrible. I'm sure they can use some improvement because they are supposed to flow 202 at 600 on the exhaust, 289 CFM on the intake ports, stocked. I mean, they did a pretty good job as far as their CNC finish work on the chambers. They could have cleaned up the end of these spark plug holes a little bit better. Because on these Pontiac heads, you kind of watch right where the spark plug the threads on the spark plug hole enters the chamber a lot of times you'll see real sharp like points that stick out right around this area those are detonating causing turds that you want to take and just knock down and, and flatten off smooth but yeah I'm, I'm pretty i'm happy with the cnc chambers on them this is a 211 2.11 intake valve 1.66 exhaust, which I already mentioned. Really kind of disappointed that they went with that side. When you pull these valves out, that sometimes it re it reveals a bunch of sins down in that bowl area. But wow, I ain't even gonna lie. 
Hi guys, that thing kicked my butt for a second. I had to fully compress this spring, literally lean the head up and just take a dead blow and tap on the, carefully, tap on, tap on the head of this valve just to get this thing to release. Hands, uh, hats off to those valve locks. Hope these things are. I'm hoping these things are. At least. Feel, yeah. Not a lot. That's a pretty dry guide. Does have undercut. At least the valves are undercut stems. does have full fully stainless intake and exhaust valves that's cool it's got the undercut stems world polished hmm. well ain't that special put that over here we can keep it clean just in case you were not understanding When you have locks, you don't want to give up. You have to compress this down. Lock it. And make them let go. At least those springs look like they have a little bit better fit and finish to them. Which, of course, turned out to be more of a headache than what I was hoping for, but we're going to pull this thing apart. I'm going to move you guys over so you can get a bird's eye view. Hopefully, God willing, everything will work out great. And this thing will have a, it won't have any sins beneath the valves and the bowls. I wouldn't hold my breath. Yep. All right, let's get this thing flipped over, get the valves out of it, and see what kind of bowls we're look, we're dealing with. Try this angle first, but it's really kind of hard to see. But I will point out there's a big ridge right below the seat. So you got your chamber smoothly radiused into your seat, which is perfect. You've got your, hmm, doesn't look like they're using more than a two angle valve job because you got your single ceiling angle, then your slight angle that goes down, and then you might consider that kind of a roll cut into the, I don't know, it doesn't look that great to me. But anyway, it's got a kind of a factory uh, machining ridge then it goes into the port keep in mind the air is coming from the cylinder trying to get out that way so anything sharp especially on this inside corner i don't know if you guys can see that there's a really sharp ridge right down inside that bowl yep that's gonna have to come out so i mean there's some sins Really bad right there. Oh Lord, there's a huge, huge ridge right past the, like you got your seat, right where it would blend into your short turn. There, <laughs> I would find it very impressive if this would flow 202 CFM with this, with, with this pour of a bowl and blend out uh, uh, yeah i'm not seeing that all that's gonna have to be smooth that's gonna have to be widened because you got your bowl as it transitions to your short turn there's a huge protrusion that's gonna all have to be removed yeah same thing on the intake just past right here where you want it to roll smooth and unobstructed there's a ridge all the way around the intake bowl it's going to have to be removed 
the sides don't feel that bad. The sides and the back wall are not horrible. Clean, you know, can be cleaned up. Now we have, keep in mind, we haven't measured anything yet. But yeah, right here on that short turn side of that intake bowl, yeah, that's not good. That's got a huge ridge, so. Okay guys, you can see a lot better now. I got her flipped over where I can show you a little bit of the sins. Um, like I was saying, the texture and the, uh, I'm gonna say the quality, I'm, I'm, I'm very hesitant to use the word quality because I'm very gun shy of anything Pro Comp makes, but this texturing and this finish in the intake bowl or in the port, it looks good to it looks good to me, guys. It's got a very you know closely tolerance valve guide boss, protruding valve guide with no boss restriction. Um, maybe you guys can see this polished area just inside this bowl, that's where they have machined their raw bare casting. And uh, the casting was, uh, I don't wanna say it was core shifted, but you can see where the tooling was touching here, but not, didn't touch anything over here. And that's because there's an overhang. Cause you've got a little bit of a core shift of that port alignment to the chamber and the seat you've got a little bit of a mi mismatch if that makes any sense you got a little bit of a mismatch over here but as long as we are blending or reducing any kind of a restriction coming up this port where we're not stubbing our toe yeah. i just call it the bowl cut blend I'm gonna have to work on it, get some measurements again. How big are we starting out? But if you look at this atrocious, that's a word I don't use very often. This, uh, <laughs> this exhaust port bowl couldn't have been much worse if you just chewed it out. It It's horrible, guys. There is overhang here, huge overhang on this inside wall. Same thing over here. And when you come past your ceiling angle, you're going towards your short, your short, <laughs> when you're going off of your seat towards your short turn, there's a huge, it's almost like a bulbous mountain right in the center of the port where it needs to be radiused a little bit more They've touched it a little bit with their tooling and then left a ridge right in the middle of the short turn transition. <sighs> well, you know, everybody's seen all the videos on YouTube of all the people warning, don't just bolt on, you know, assembled cylinder heads because they're probably not going to be ready. Well, these aren't looking too great, but I think we can clean them up and kind of erase some of those little tidbits. I think I can get these cleaned up. Um, I don't think they're gonna take a whole lot of work to get where they need to go. Um, basically, like I said, I wanna see what kind of percentages they're using on their intake and exhaust bowls. So let me measure that real quick. Again, we're gonna go with Speedmaster. Was at least trying to do a performance bowl cut percentage. Uh, when I measured the intake bowl, it was one, one inch, 884 thousandths of an inch. Okay, remember, we got a 211, 2.11 intake valve. So the bowl cut percentage is right where I would wanna shoot for uh, on most street or performance orientated street strip type cylinder heads, uh, they have it set at 89.28%. So I don't have to make this bigger. I just need to try to rough out these edges where they've done a poor job of blending to the port, if that makes any sense. Like I'm, I'm happy with the percentage on the bowl cut size 
they just did not do the finish work to blend it or finish it to the port. When I measured the exhaust bowl, it was one inch 429 thousandths, which with a 1.66 1.66 exhaust valve, that comes out to a right at 86.08. So we'll just call this bowl cut percentage 86 percent. I try to run 86 to 87 percent. So again, I don't have to make this a lot bigger. I just have to fix the poor job they did going from the bowl cut into the actual port. As long as all the bowl cut percentages are where I would put them to begin with, I just need to fix or smooth all the uh, inadequacies. A lot of the issues that people see with the Speedmaster slash old school Pro Comp heads was whatever the material they were using for the valve guides was soft. So literally within, you know, few thousand miles, way less than 10,000 miles, you'd get excessive guide wear because the guide was made out of some, you know, chalk or some kind of crappy material that couldn't hold up. That's my initial, uh, Initial look over of the Speedmaster, looking over my shoulder, Pontiac V8 aluminum cylinder heads. Um, man, they've got some really good claims, you know. I mean, if these things are truly flowing dang near 290 CFM out of the box, I see no reason why these things might not, you know, hit 300 with just a little bit of cleanup on the intake port and intake bowl, we can uh, exceed that 200 CFM on the exhaust side with just a little bit of cleanup work in that bowl, bowl blend and short turn, so. Anyway, it's got some room for improvement. That's what we needed to do, was just kind of give these heads a once over, pull the valves and, uh, pull the valves and springs out of it and just see exactly what we're dealing with and go from there, guys. So that is my initial review on these Speedmaster Pontiac V8 aluminum cylinder heads with 211-166 valves. And we're going to try to clean them up and see if we can make them pull a little bit better. Maybe do a little gasket matching on it once we figure out for sure what um, intake they're going to run. I appreciate you guys watching the channel. Hopefully this is a little bit of a change of pace for somebody who's, you know, getting burned out on LS cylinder heads. And it's not going to be a huge, a huge job to get these things cleaned up and flowing a little bit better. Please like, subscribe, and share. Tell all your buddies. Tell all your friends.